Well, a very good morning to you all and welcome to our service on the 24th of January. This week is the week of prayer for Christian unity and the theme given to uh, this week is abiding in Christ, praying for our own church families, praying for all our brothers and sisters in Christ, both locally and throughout the world. I hope you enjoy uh, the service that we prepared for you today. It's taken from the booklet that has been prepared for uh, this week. I hope you're all keeping safe and well and don't forget that if we can help in any way, do get in touch. So I'm just going to begin with some words reflecting upon uh, the service and the theme for this year. Well, we have to remember, of course, that our spiritual well-being is very important, as important as our physical well-being. This last year has been a challenge for all of us who enjoy going to church and, and gain much from joining together in fellowship with the church. The COVID-19 pandemic has put all uh, strains onto that uh, time that we can have uh, together. But we are careful, as I say, about our physical health. We take precautions, we wash our hands, we wear face masks. We're all familiar now with the social distancing that we have to keep. Some uh, tragically have been ill through this year, many have lost ones they have loved through this year, and this is such a hard time for so many people. Meanwhile, the working lives of many people have been disrupted, many people unable to work, many worried about their jobs when this pandemic is over, many worried about, of course, their families. A huge personal cost that we have all had to put in place to get us through this last year and indeed the challenges still ahead of us. So as we think about our health, as we have that anxiety perhaps sometimes about our health, we become aware of our vulnerability. At the same time, of course, church buildings have been closed, many unable to have come to worship together over uh, this last year. And uh, say so this is a, a difficult time for so many people, but there have been opportunities to worship and to pray together. We feel, though, sometimes that sense of isolation, if we haven't felt it safe to return to church, if we haven't been able to engage with the online worship that has been offered. Well, the period of lockdown that we've lived through has caused us to take a step back, to think about our priorities, to think about what really matters, what is important in our lives. What do we value and what makes sense of our lives? The long periods of absence from extended family and friends, the inability to share meals together, to socialise together, not being able to get together for birthdays, weddings, Christmas, holidays and so on, all examples of the things we have had to change in our lives. So when it comes to our spiritual life, what's most important for us? As a church, to a large extent, as it was to most people, we are meant to be one church. We are meant to be brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ in the world today. Well, of course, from its foundation, the church has had a rhythm of prayer. And we are called to be people of prayer in our lives. Religious orders, of course, uh, guide their whole day around that order of prayer. So the rhythm of prayer, it comes in traditional forms. It has a structure with hymns and psalms. And perhaps most importantly, something often missing from our worship is times of silence. Well, the ancient church today struggles with the lockdown. The ancient church struggles with the pandemic that we face. But today we are reminded that we do abide in Christ, that we are people of prayer. That although we are apart for large periods of time during this time, we are bound together in prayer. We are bound together in Christ. So today, as I say, we come to remember that Christ is always with us, that promise that he gives us that he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, to pray for each other, to have these moments together, and to pray that one day we can be back together celebrating Christ in our buildings.
Shall we continue now with prayer? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and also with you. It is the great desire of God expressed by Jesus that we might come to him and abide in him. He waits for us tirelessly, hoping that, united to him in love, we will bear fruit that will bring life to all. Faced with our differences, we risk withdrawing into ourselves and seeing only that which separates us. But let us listen to how Christ calls us to abide in his love and so to bear much fruit. In the moments of prayer that will follow, we remember the call of Christ. We turn to his love, to him who is the centre of our lives. For the path of unity begins in our intimate relationship with God. Abiding in God's love strengthens the desire to seek unity and reconciliation with others. God opens us up to those who are different from us. And this is an important fruit, a gift of healing for the divisions within us, between us and in the world. So in God's peace, let us pray to him. Lord, Lord you, you are, are the vine, vine dresser who cares for us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each person and yet, yet too, too often the differences in the world make us, make afraid. us afraid we withdraw, we withdraw into, into ourselves our, our trust in you is forsaken enmity develops between us come and direct our hearts towards you once again grant us to live from your forgiveness so that we may be together and praise your name amen well, our service today is a series of reflections upon the theme Abiding in Christ. And the first of the reflections is taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, where Jesus says the words, You did not choose me, but I chose you. So some words from Genesis, chapter 12, the call of Abraham. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. And some words now from John's Gospel, where we hear the call of the first disciples. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus pass him by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which translated is Peter. The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, were from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. 
How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Well, the start of any journey is an encounter between a human being and God, between the created and the creator, between time and eternity. In our first reading there from Genesis, Abraham heard the call of God, go to the land that I will show you. Well, like Abraham, we are called to leave that which is familiar and go to the place that God has prepared for us, the depths of our hearts. Well, along the way, we become more and more ourselves, the people that God wants us to be from the beginning. And by following the call that is addressed to us, we become a blessing for our loved ones, our neighbours, and a blessing to the world. Well, that love of God constantly seeks us. God became human in Jesus, in whom we encounter the gaze of God. In our lives, as in the Gospel of John, God's call is heard in different ways. That we are touched in so many different ways by the love of God, and then we set out on that journey. Well, in this encounter, we walk a path of change, a path of transformation, the bright beginning of a relationship of love that was always started afresh and anew in our lives. Some words now taken from the source of Teze. One day you understand that without being aware of it, a yes had already been inscribed in your innermost depths, and so you chose to go forward in the footsteps of Christ. In silence, in the presence of Christ, you heard him say, Come, follow me. I will give you a place to rest your heart. and a prayer. Jesus Christ, you seek us. You wish to offer us your friendship and to lead us to a life that is ever more complete. Grant us the confidence to answer your call so that we may be transformed and become witnesses of your tenderness for the world. Amen. Amen.
we come now to a litany of praise. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of the world and among all peoples. We sing your praise in the midst of creation and among all creatures. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise among suffering and tears. We sing your praise among promises and achievements. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the places of conflict and misunderstanding. We sing your praise in the places of encounter and reconciliation. You who call us to be praised in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of rifts and divisions. We sing your praise in the midst of life and death, the birth of a new heaven and a new earth. You who call us to be praised in the midst of the earth, glory to you. Our second reflection today is taken from John's Gospel again, chapter 15, and it's Jesus saying, Abide in me as I abide in you. So I'll begin with some words from Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. And a reading now from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, Mary, Mary treasures all these things. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to custom. After the festival was over, when his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they travelled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? Jesus asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what it was he was saying to them. Then they went down to Nazareth with them, and he was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and man. Some words now for us to meditate on. The encounter with Jesus gives rise to the desire to stay with him, to be with him and to abide in him always, a time in which fruit matures. Being fully human like us, Jesus grew and he matured in his ministry. He lived a simple life, was very much rooted in the practices of his Jewish faith. In this hidden life in Nazareth, where apparently nothing extraordinary happened, the presence of the Father nourished Jesus. Mary contemplated the actions of God in her life and in that of her Son. She treasured all these things in her heart. Thus, little by little, she embraced the mystery of Jesus. We too need a long period to mature, an entire lifetime, in order to plumb the depths of Jesus' love 
for us, to let him abide in us and for us to abide in him. Without our knowing how, the Spirit makes Christ dwell in each of our hearts and it is through prayer, by listening to the word of God, in sharing this with others and by putting into practice what we have understood, that the inner being of our lives is strengthened. So let's just pause and think of some words now from the sources of Teze. Letting Christ descend into the depths of our being, he will penetrate the regions of the mind and of the heart. He will reach out from our flesh and to our innermost being, so that we too will one day experience the depths of his mercy. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, may we receive in our hearts the presence of Christ and cherish it as a secret of love. Nourish our lives of prayer, enlighten our reading of Scripture, act through us so that the fruits of your gifts can patiently grow in us. Amen. Amen. Well, a third of our reflections, again taken from St. John's Gospel, uh, chapter 15, Jesus says these words, Love one another as I have loved you. Some words then from Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive each other. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And some words now again from John, all about Jesus giving us an example of how to love each other. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, 
drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he had said everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So thinking now about those words in the reflection, the words there from St. John's Gospel, we are taken back to the eve of Jesus' death. And what does Jesus do? He kneels to wash the feet of his disciples. He knew about the difficulty of living together and the importance of forgiveness and mutual service. Unless I wash you, he said to Peter, you will have no share in me. So Peter received Jesus at his feet. He washed and was touched by the humility and by the gentleness of Christ. Later he would follow Jesus' example and serve the fellowship of the faithful within the early church. Well, Jesus wishes that the life and love will circulate also through us as a, the sap circulates through a vine, so that in the Christian communities we be one body, but today, as in the past, it's not easy to live together, to share our lives together. We are often faced with our own limitations. At times, we fail to love those who are close to us in our community, our parish, or our family. There are times when our relationships break down completely. But in Christ, we are invited to be clothed in compassion through countless new beginnings. The recognition that we are loved by God moves us to welcome each other. It strengthens all of our weaknesses. It is then that Christ will be in our midst. And again from the sources of Teze. With almost nothing, you are a creator of reconciliation in that communion of love, which is the body of Christ, his church. Sustained by a shared momentum of rejoice. You are no longer alone. In all things you are advancing together with your brothers and sisters. With them you are called to live the parable of community. Let us pray. God our Father, you reveal your love through Jesus Christ and through our brothers and sisters. Open our hearts so that we can welcome each other with our differences and live in forgiveness. Grant us to live united in one body, so that the gift that is in each person may come to light. May all of us together be a reflection of the living Christ. Amen.
we turn now to God in prayer. God of love, through Christ you said to us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You seek us. You invite us to receive your friendship and to abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation and grow in a life that is more complete. The joy of our heart is in God. God of life, you call us to be praise in the midst of a world and to be welcoming of one another as a gift of your grace. May your loving gaze, which rests upon each person, open us to receive each other just as we are. The joy of our heart is in God. God, you who gather, you who knit us together as one vine in your Son, Jesus, may your loving Spirit abide in us, in our local churches, in our community meetings, in ecumenical gatherings. Grant that together we may celebrate you with joy. The joy of our heart is in God. God of the one vineyard, you call us to abide in your love in all we do and say. Touched by your goodness, grant us to be a reflection of that love in our homes and workplaces. May we bring rivalries and overcome tensions. The joy of our heart is in God. Let us just spend a moment now, just a few moments of silence, bringing our lives before our Heavenly Father, praying for that healing, reconciling love to be shown in our lives. Very often we think of prayer as something that we do, an activity on our own. In this time together, we are invited to in interior silence, to turn aside from all noise and concerns in our lives and our thoughts. In this silence, the action belongs to God. We are simply called to abide and to rest in God's love. So we pray now as Jesus taught us, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So our spirituality and our solidarity are inseparably linked. Prayer and action belong together. When we abide in Christ, we receive the spirit of courage and wisdom to act against all injustice and oppression. We say, pray and work that God may reign. Throughout, Throughout your day, day let, let the, the word, word of God, God breathe life into work, work and rest. rest. Maintain inner silence in all things, so as to dwell in Christ. Be filled with the spirit of the Beatitudes, joy, simplicity, and mercy. Be one so that the world may believe. Abide in God's love. Go into the world and bear the fruits of his love. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in faith so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today in our online service as we come to Christ in times of prayer, stillness, and worship, asking him to guide us even in those darkest and most difficult of days as we face what we are facing together we are together in Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you, all who are in your prayers, this day and always. Amen. Amen.